Okay, so it is after work. I am just turning my computer on now and I'm going to get started on day one of the course. I'm nervous, excited, um, very anxious, <laughs> mostly just because I'm an incredible plotter and I don't even feel remotely ready to start this book. But I'm embracing a little bit of my inner pantser, although any of you that aren't crazy plotters are going to be like, ah, uh, this is nowhere close to pantsing. But for me, it feels close to pantsing. It's the least detailed of an outline I've ever worked on. I think literally ever. So uh, we'll see how that goes. And I'm thinking about this as a zero draft where, you know, I'm trying to write light, not, you know, go into crazy depth if there's anything that I'm not really sure on and I'll kind of figure it out. And I don't know. I don't know. We're just, we're going to try it. We're going to, we're going to do stuff. I don't know. Hi, I just wanted to film a very quick update. It is Wednesday now, day three of the course. And we had the, um, what is it called? Like the, the orientation introduction live stream with the teacher. And it was really good. It I don't know, I'm feeling really inspired and extra lucky that I'm getting to do this because it sounds really awesome. The The guy that's in charge of the course, I think his name is Tom, I'll have to double check that, but like he's very qualified. <laughs> he has a lot of experience doing this, he has a lot of like trad pub experience both like with being published and he like worked in publishing houses like um, the one that's now called like Hachette, he worked in one of those arms in uh, UK I think or over in Europe. Um, and he did a bunch of ghostwriting and stuff that has like awards and like all this stuff and he's like very qualified but the really cool thing was when they were talking about the um the other students that have published and it was just like here are some authors that have gone through our course and some of their published books and like I recognized a lot of them like they were like there are bestsellers on the list like there's like people have gone through this course and you know, it's not to, it's not to say it's like, you know, hypey and all, but they've gone through the course and they're now traditionally published best-selling authors. Obviously not all of them are, obviously it still takes a lot of work and a lot of other stuff and skill and yada yada, but like, it was just really like, it was a really good way to start the course. Um, so I'm enjoying that. I've been enjoying the, the lessons and everything a lot more than I expected to. I thought they'd be good, but like, I don't know, like, it's not like it tells you everything, right? Like, it's a one-on-one -on -one thing, and I'm sure throughout the course it, like, will continue to build in more depth and more detail. Like, it is very introductory, like, the lessons are, like, 10 to 12 minutes, but, like, it's just, it's very well put together, and I don't know, I'm just, I've been enjoying it so far, and I wrote, uh, yesterday, I wrote the most surprising thing that I've ever written. And it was because we were doing the starting again lesson where they were talking about different ways to start. And one of the things they talked about was like starting like zoomed out and then coming in and like the benefits to that and all that. And I was like, you know, I think that would actually work really well for my story. I've never written something like that because if you're zoomed out, you're not with the character, right? And I've only ever written, I've really only ever written third person. Like I have written first, but... I write a very, very close third person where you follow a character, you describe things from their point of view, like it's all from their point of view even though it's in third person. So writing stepped out where like you have a narrative voice instead of being in the character's head, you know? And it was the most voicey, unlike my usual writing thing that I've ever written. And it was so cool. like. I actually love it. Like I ran downstairs and I read it to my husband after my writing session because I was like, look at this thing I wrote. Isn't this weird? It's it's very unlike my normal stuff. Um, so just hearing different examples and different ideas and like things that like might click or be inspiring to give you ideas while you're in that stage when you're hearing it, you know, like it just, it works really well. And it's hard to explain that, but like, I don't know. I've been enjoying it so far, but I'm gonna, I'll check back in at the end of the week. I need to do my writing session for today. Yeah. 
Okay, so it is Sunday, the very end of week one, and I have all my notes here and all my daily notes that I've taken. Um, so I wanted to just run through and talk about what I did, what I learned, what I thought about it, about how I'm doing, and what my plans are going forward. Um, so first, I'm enjoying it so far. So far, it's, it's pretty good. I've been a little apprehensive, and I think it takes a little while to get into the flow of what the weeks are like, you know what I mean? So... I feel like the first week or two is gonna have a lot of adjustment as you're getting used to like how much time everything takes you, when you want to take the different lessons and stuff, because some of it it's like it's really good to think about and some of it you really want to be sitting there to take notes on. So like kind of figuring out logistically how you want to get everything done. Um, but for week one, I only wrote for four days and ended up being kind of a crazy weekend, which I should have expected. Um, but I got 6,157 words done, which is not quite 1K an hour, but that does put me in my weekly word count range, which was 5.6 to 7.2 thousand words. So I'm perfectly happy with that. I got in my word count range. This also means I might go faster than expected, or it might just mean I have the wiggle room in my schedule for things to come up, which they always inevitably do. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of where I'm doing, um, and then, yes, so, what I learned, um, and I'm just mostly going to be reading this part because I took notes as I was going so that I would remember, right, because my brain, but week one covers story beginnings, um, so there was a live stream with the thriller writer Joe Furness on Monday too, which was not overly applicable, but it was kind of cool to hear all of that. Um, so I, I enjoyed that. Um, and I think they're kind of like the live ones. They're kind of just like random extra topics, you know, but the lessons specifically, they kind of covered why to start where you do, how to ground the reader, different ways to start, how to introduce your characters, what kind of de details to focus on, um, and then how to incorporate backstory, which I thought was all pretty good. I like the examples. Um, I think that the strict like academic note taking stuff was all definitely pretty introductory but the thing is that taking those lessons while you're in those stages of the book and also listening to the examples and listening to them talk about it like I have ADHD so like re recalling information is hard for me so I like to, that's why I like to make cheat sheets, right? So that I can kind of look at it and that triggers all my memories for all the different things I need to be thinking about. And so this really did that for me. And also just getting to hear the examples because they go through a lot of examples in the lessons. Um, it was just, it's, it triggers ideas and it gets your brain thinking like, oh, like I could do this and I could do this and oh, I could try this. And then every time I sat down to write, I had ideas and thoughts of what to do. And I won't say every single writing session I had a specific idea that came inspired from the lessons but most of them I think I did um so I think that is definitely a testament to like even if you're not doing a course like this I think it's really beneficial to maybe make yourself this sort of a like a lesson plan where you find some YouTube videos right that are about the relevant sections like maybe you listen to some character ones you listen to some ones on like plot, um, I really like, um, why is her name Blake? Li uh, Lizelle Sambury has a Save the, Co Save the Cat, wow, beat sheet series where she goes over each major like beat in section, one video at a time. So like I might also go through if I have time and listen to the relevant ones while I'm going through here because she just hearing that reminds you of all of these things, right? So I think that's a really beneficial thing, especially for my poor little ADHD brain. So that is a good thing for me to be like figuring out. Um, so we also had a cool panel, which was like pre-recorded and that was on Saturday. And it was pretty short. I want to say it was like between 10 and 20 minutes. Um, and it was kind of like, it looks like clips from larger interviews with lots of authors that then like they took those chunks and put them together so I'm wondering if that's going to be all the Saturdays is like they ask this panel of authors the same like 15 questions and then we're going to see them all answer them each week which would be really cool if that's what they're doing um but what they were talking about is where they get their story ideas from and like where 
like what that process was sort of like getting that novel started and getting that novel from like conception and idea to like a book a story um and that was actually really interesting um it wasn't necessarily like educational from the like oh well these are places i can get story ideas from too but it just humanizing other authors and the processes they go through like it was it was just really interesting you know um day one was definitely kind of hard for me getting started which is not too surprising um, I struggled to just figure out how to start and where to start. I actually skipped to the beginning of the first scene because I'm like, I don't know how I want to start start this. Quite as, so I kind of started in the action. Uh, I think the only big note I took was um, they did feedback. And so basically what happens is I think on Wednesday you like a post to say you want to be paired up for feedback that weekend. Um, and then... Yeah, you're picked with a random person on Friday and they just make a post and like say this person and this person. Um, so it's not like it's geared towards like age group or genre or anything like that. Um, which is fine given that it's just a random person each week. So you're really just kind of getting... I I, I hesitated at first on whether or not I liked this idea because I'm like, they're not going to be able to give you developmental ideas or structural ideas or like thoughts on your character arcs or your plot arcs or anything like that because they're not gonna have any context right like you can provide a little like this is what's happening but they're not gonna have any of that high level idea so mostly I think it's geared towards like what's working if anything's not working but also encouragement and sort of that initial idea of learning how to provide feedback which I think is really useful for authors I think a lot of them don't really like I didn't when I was first starting, you know what I mean? Like to work with other writers. So I think that's something that's really important for a lot of people to do. I am curious to see how effective it continues to be as the course goes on, but I signed up for that this week. I did the feedback. Yeah, I don't know. I think some people are still struggling with figuring out how this stuff works. Like I, you can definitely tell that like some of the people haven't done online courses before and stuff. So they're kind of uh, I feel like it'll take a week or two for people to get in the flow of where everything is um, and how to work everything. Okay, so the next section that I was taking notes on is like experience and how I'm doing. I may have already covered some of this, but every time I start drafting again, it always takes a bit of time to really get in the flow again. I've noticed that every time I start a new draft, um, not like so much in revisions because in revisions you already have something, but when you're starting from a blank page, it's harder, but... Yeah, it's gonna be a weird week. I have um, my husband's family staying with us literally the entire week and we're going on a four day trip, basically the entire way across the country on the first vacation that my husband and I have taken by ourselves since our honeymoon like seven years ago. So I'm not doing anything on that trip. I might do some stuff like in the airport well, or like in the plane cause it's a long flight. But other than that, I'm doing nothing. So it's gonna be a less productive week, but that's fine. I've accounted for it and I'll check in next week. All right, I am going to summarize weeks two and three here because <sighs> week two kind of got away from me. Um, I went on my first proper vacation with my husband. Let's just say in terms of my time, week two was kind of a wash for me. Um, but I did go through all of the videos and the course material and stuff still and it was pretty good. So week two was Secret Sauce, which was essentially just a series of like general good writing things to know uh, that aren't specifically about the beginning of writing but they're important things to be aware of and to think about throughout writing right um so let's see do i have what they are written down i think i do um so movement so like having people moving through a scene talking about change talking about space and giving the uh, like reader space to imagine things and stuff like that, peril, voice, um, and then we had a really cool um, where all of the I guess guest author lecturers went through talking about their opening pages a bit which is really good. Um, I wouldn't say because they were all kind of high level right so like I've it's all information I've heard before but I think that it was very good things to have that active refresher and keeping in mind and I think the way they went through it was really good introductions to those topics. So let's just move straight on to week three. So week three um, is character and so 
I really like character. It's one of the things that I've done the most research on recently, um, so I was really looking forward to this week. Um, and so they really focused on character, empathizing with your characters, uh, creating flawed characters, making them vulnerable, having change, conflict, tension, all of that wrapped into your characterization, which I thought was all really important things. Um, and there's also a lot of good things to think about in these early stages of writing the novel, right? When we're still building up our main characters and still doing that initial characterization of kind of really understanding them, where they're starting. Uh, week three, we're supposed to be in the 10k to 15k range, which is sort of in your like inciting incident territory, maybe a little bit past that. So at this point, you should really understand who your character is, what they're doing, why they're doing it, etc. Um, so I, I enjoyed it, um, but yeah, it's <laughs> recovering from vacation has been crazy. Uh, I kind of glacier is pretty great, but yeah, keeping up with something like this when you have so much else going on is definitely really difficult. Like I have a full-time job, I have two kids, I have a husband, I have other um, commitments and stuff that I have to do, so it's been a lot, but... <sighs> My word counts have been a little slower as I'm getting back in the throw of things. It's definitely an endurance sport where you just kind of want to keep going with steady progress, uh, whatever that looks like for you. And I got knocked out of it, so now I have to get back into it. And yeah, so I only got a few K in this week, but I had some really, really good feedback swaps that I'm very excited about. Uh, it's... If you give a scene that you're like, I want to know if I'm doing this well, am I portraying this information? Does this bit of dialogue make sense, right? Like from that perspective, it's been really helpful to ask for that really focused feedback on things, especially if it's something that like you're working on as a skill, like the stuff from last week, the secret sauce week, working in on adding space to a scene or adding peril or whatnot, right? Um, so I think that was actually really helpful. The person who I was paired up with, um, actually really enjoyed, really enjoyed what they sent. Um, it was really good to not read like a first draft and I really appreciated the feedback they gave me. It was very, very helpful. So that was great. Um, my plans going forward right now are that I really just want to get moving again, get back into that flow, get back into those, uh, meeting my word count goals, but I do not anticipate to quite hit it next week. Next week was supposed to be one of my lighter weeks anyway, because I have a big workshop thing all weekend. So I'm going to be prepping for that. And then I'm going to be busy literally all weekend. And I think it's my husband's birthday too. So like, it's just, we have a lot of commitments. Um, I'm getting into the point now where my characters are starting to meet each other, right? For my like found family group. And it's exciting, but yes, I'm going to go now. And then we will check back in at the end of week four. Okay, hi, so we are done with week four now, which was plot skills number one. And yeah, we're doing good. We're starting to get back in the flow of things. Um, I had a really big workshop this weekend, which was like a sword fighting dance thing, which was exhausting. I am so tired. I have never been so sore and tired in my entire life and that's saying something. Um, but this week had some really fun topics. So it was to focusing on story DNA, so sort of breaking up that beginning, middle, end into their components, talking about scenes versus summaries, which was particularly good. I liked how they explained that. It's not something that I think you get into in a lot of more basic introductory craft books, so I think that was really nice. We talked about ways to reveal information, ways to do flashbacks, um, ways to have mystery, surprise, and suspense in, and these are all things that they are plot skills. I had expecting expected these to be like higher level plot skills, but they really weren't. Some of them were like got into that, but a lot of it was on how to contribute to the plot from the scene level, right? Which I actually like, I actually thought it was really good, right? Um, there was a section on uh, a mystery, surprise, and suspense, which I always think is interesting. But yes, the <laughs> oh my gosh, so the end of the week Saturday thing where we talked to all the authors um, was on plotting versus pantsing. And it was very interesting because I think what a lot of people think is plotting is not what I think is plotting. Like 
having an idea of what's gonna happen in the story is not like that is like I guess by definition that is plotting but I am such an extensive plotter that I don't know I don't know it was just it's really interesting to hear about because a lot of the pantsers were talking about how it's a lot easier for them in the moment and they have to write through it and that's where you know the fun comes from and the joy and the creativity is like while they're sitting there writing it sort of comes to life in front of them and I just can't relate with <laughs> like to that at all like that is just not how my brain works um I think it was interesting that I don't know if it's just the the authors that they chose or like I don't know, but none of them were what I would call serious plotters. Like, there are definitely some people in there that come up with, like, a rough idea or, like, will plot the chapter ahead, but they definitely weren't super plotters, which I think sort of makes sense for the authors they chose because this course isn't going to teach you how to super plot, right? Like, it is definitely a pantsing-heavy, light-plotting-heavy kind of course. Um... Um, it's just the way my brain works, I guess. Like, I can't think of all those things and be creative in those ways while I'm writing. Like, that big picture stuff, I have to think about really, really intentionally when I can look at all the different pieces and parts that I want to incorporate, and then I can be creative and come up with things and kind of imagine these characters as real creatures and think about what happened to them and what's going to happen to them and what they're going to do. And I can't do that while I'm writing because I'm so focused on the scene. And when I'm focused on the scene, I'm focused on that low level. I can't think about all the high level stuff. So it just doesn't work for me. Again, if you know that, do that preparation before this course kind of thing. Um, but let me go back to the beginning of the week. This was a good week. Um, didn't quite hit my word count. Not that my word count goal was very high. My word count wasn't very high, so it's fine. Um, and then we're going to the beach. So we'll see how that goes, but... It's also a week on description, which will be good because I'm actually in a series of scenes where I'm going to be doing a lot of descriptions that will actually fit very well. But yes, I will check back in at the end of week five. Hello, I hope you can't hear that computer. It's updating and being really loud. Hopefully it quiets down in a minute. Um, but I wanted to give my week five update, which is very fun. It's been... Uh, it's honestly, it's been kind of crazy. Um, yes, it's been a week. But anyway, so week five was focusing on description, which was actually really fun. Um, I tend to not get as in it, like, okay, maybe it's inaccurate to say I don't get into description in the first drafts, but it tends to be in big spurts. Like, I'll have really good inspiration for a few scenes, but then a lot of it, like, tends to be something I have to work in later. Um, so it's kind of cool to be thinking about it really intentionally this week. But we covered senses, movement, color, small details, uh, people past and POV. Um, and senses was great, talking about incorporating different non-visual senses, which, I mean, I feel like you all, you hear about that all the time. That's a fairly common bit of advice to use, you know, not just sight, but like touch and smell and taste and all that stuff. But the examples were really good. Um, I, I really liked how they went about it, but talking about writing writing in that way was just I don't know it worked for me I really like to write more immersive textured scenes um I've gotten less into that with this book right now uh but like the one I am revising I'm really trying to lean into it hard because the the environment is a big factor in that book and it just like it is really important for the mood Whereas this one, a little bit less so right now. I need to find ways to work it in, but it's less like a full intentional thing. Um, but let's see. Uh, I enjoyed incorporating movement and combining that with the senses throughout the scenes, you know, like using lots of verbs. Uh, they talked about using color for mood and emphasis, which is really something that... Like, I know it's a thing, but it's not really something I'd thought about very much. Um, so that was kind of cool. Uh, using really specific details, which... I really, really like that. I really agree that that is such an important uh, strategy to use. Um, and then they went back to viewpoint again with like zooming in and zooming out with using that level of detail, which was, I really, I don't know. I The last time they talked about that zooming in and out thing, I really liked it too. I just, I think that just really is clicking for me because it's, it's kind of a new thing that I don't do very much. Um, but let's see. 
I, okay, one of the days was people passed in POV, and I thought this was going to be just like, uh, you know, but that was actually my favorite one this week. It was really cool. They talked about, like, using people and describing the people in the crowds and what people are doing to, to give an idea of, like, place and setting, and, like, you can learn so much from just describing a crowd, right? Like, without even describing, like, the setting, like, just describing the people and what they're doing is so engaging and I love the examples they went through. Like, I, I really like that. I think that's a really great way to go about it. Um, they talked about using the past of a setting, which is very applicable for the book I'm drafting right now. Like, the change of the society over time and the direction it's going in right now is one of the big conflict drivers um, in multiple ways for the underlying theme of my book. Um, so that's really good. Uh, and then this week's author panel was on writing description, which it was cool hearing how different authors do that, hearing some like examples about that. Um, and then I mostly hit my word count this week. I, I'm filming this a little early, so I haven't finished the week, so I don't have a final word count, but I'm mostly keeping up. Um, I've been very social this week, unfortunately, which is a problem, but it's good to see people and do things and catch up, but I'm such an introvert. But yeah, I haven't, I haven't had time to be, go through like I'd planned at the beginning and like world build all the details that I thought I'd need. But I think it's working out because I've just been making lots of notes and building on them as I go. Like, oh, I need to build this thing. But then as I go further, I'm like, oh, I need to build this thing like this to add these extra details. And just, you know, I think it's giving me a more of an idea of what I really want to be as effective as possible when I go back through at the end, which is great. But yes, that is my week five update. Yes. And uh, yeah, I'll check in next week. All right, so we are on the end of week six, which was on dialogue. And dialogue has been a thing for me. I, it's not that I think my dialogue is bad. I just think there's so many opportunities to show characterization and voice and dialogue. And it's not something that I'm, I feel like is one of my strengths yet. So it's something that looking forward, I really want to spend a lot of time working on. Um, so I've, this week in particular, I was really, really excited for. Um, so let me go through my notes, but we covered voice, conflict, rhythm, uh, real speech, body language. Those are the topics. Um, and yeah, it, it did have some really good stuff in it. Um, it talked about really having a voice for your character, um, how you should be able to just read a line of dialogue and know without any context who said it. Um, and I think that's, you know, a really good bit of advice. It's something that I've heard said in a lot of places. Obviously, that's not always the case. Like, sometimes it's, like, one or two words and you really can't. Um, but, you know, you really have to know your characters. Um, and you need to get the, the rhythm of the conversations down, making it sound natural. Uh, one of the things they talked about was, what did they call it? Grammatical deviance, <laughs> which... I thought was brilliant. It, it, it cracked me up. Um, but yeah, one of the things that I've read a lot about dialogue that I'd want to combine with all of this is the concept of it being in, like, beats where some, like, reaction, action, reaction, action, reaction sort of thing where every beat, like, what they're trying to do in their reaction to it should be slightly different, um, which is something that... I've been struggling to wrap my head around in uh, Dialogue by Robert McKee, which is a difficult read, uh, to be honest, but it, it hasn't quite clicked for me. But I think after this week, a lot of this stuff helped, like just hearing the examples, hearing them talk about it. Like, it's just a good way, even though it's kind of, um, I, I don't want to say surface level. It's not surface level. It's, it's more than that, but it is like a beginner course on it. Um, but after going through it, because it's, a good explanation. There's good examples. Like, it's just good to, like, really lock in those fundamentals. I think I could go back to that book and maybe try and understand the more advanced concepts in it, but I'm not sure. Um, I did like how they talked about um, body language to show things as well, because a conversation isn't all just words. It's all not all just dialogue. There's things that go along with it. Um, and the other thing that I really like is the idea of using like subtext. I think that's really important in a conversation. Like it's not always about what they're actually saying, but what they're thinking and what they mean and all that stuff, which gives you, as they've talked about in the course, that room for the 
uh, reader to sort of fill in the pieces, right? Because that's something that they've really focused on in this course as a way to improve the reader experience, which I, I really agree with that. Um, but I enjoyed it. It was good. Uh, the panel this week was on world building, which was fun. There actually are some like fantasy writers in it. Uh, so it was like a spread of like more contemporary world building or historical world building and like fantasy world building. And they just kind of like talked about, I don't know how they do world building, how they get those, uh, those ideas for it and everything. And it was really, it was really fun to listen to. Like, I don't know if I necessarily got a ton of like actionable advice or like pointers from it, but it was just, it was a fun, it got my, my wheels turning a little bit, you know? Um, and something that they talked about was, for one of the the fantasy writers, she talked about rooting um, these settings and the experiences in the settings um, fundamentally in something real. So like something that she's experienced or like that feeling and then bring that into the fantasy world, even if it's not something you could experience here, bringing in a bit of that like realness into it to just make it really click and feel like something that's real, even if it's fantasy, right? I enjoyed that. I fell behind a little bit this week, which is okay, but I'm having fun. I I think I'm going to need to go back in a revision pass and really try and clarify the voice of all my characters. I have it to an extent, but I want to get a lot more specific about it, right? Like, I want there to be certain sayings that tie into both the society world building side of it, but then also tie into the, that specific character's, like, experiences and, uh, like, who they are. But... I I have trouble trouble thinking of those things on the fly. So I'll have to kind of go back and like fill that out and then go in and like rework the dialogue a little bit. I don't think it's awful, but it could definitely be better. I've made all the characters very distinct, right? Like when I when I came up with them and I worked in the web, I really did it in a way to build as much conflict on different levels as possible. Like some of them have like social class conflict. Some of them have like um, fundamental conflicts based off the magic system or, um, and just, just lots of things like that where it's, like, some is, like, more personal, some's more general, some has to do with, like, just, like, the fact that one of them is a martial artist and the other one is scared of soldiers. Like, stuff like that that gives me a lot of room for conflict in the dialogue and in their interactions with each other, but I want to bring that into the, like, those, the specificity. The specificity is key here, right? And I think specificity can be hard in a first draft. Or I'm kind of considering this as your draft for me. But yeah. So that's the week six. And next week's week seven. I don't know if I'm going to have time to do a recap for week seven. I might have to do week seven and eight together. So I will see you in two weeks. Okay, hi. It is the midpoint of the course now, and I'm wrapping up week seven and week eight. So week seven was kind of crazy for me personal life-wise. I had a really huge, really, really huge video project that I needed to finish that weekend. Um, so I spent the majority of my free time that week working on getting that finished. It was my world building guide or a mineralogy video, uh, which is out now. Uh, came out on Thursday, but I had to get that out and it was way more work than I expected and it was a lot. I think there was at one point where that weekend where I was like, maybe I'll just delete all of this and not put it out just so I can be done with it. It was exhausting, um, but I got that video out <laughs> and I definitely did not get all my writing done last week. I've had a little bit of time to catch up and I'm expecting this next month here, well, we'll get to that in week eight, sorry. But yes, week seven was texture. And I did keep up with all the video lessons. Um, and I did like this. It So what they did is they kind of define texture as, or they're using texture to describe like different modes of writing. Like you have action, thought, dialogue, um, that sort of stuff. And those are different textures, right? They have different pacing in them. Um, I think texture is like, when I was thinking of texture, that's not really what I thought they meant, but that's what they meant here. And so they kind of go through all of those things and how you can use them to vary it and get different like pacings and experiences for the reader and then how to mix it all together was sort of the, the thing for the week, um, which was cool. I mean, I enjoyed that. 
Um, it's definitely, as I mentioned, something that's more to focus on when editing and rewriting than it is when initial writing, but it was a good thing to just kind of think about a little bit to maybe vary it as you're writing if you're like, oh, I don't know what to write next. Well, look at the textures you've used recently and maybe do something different. I don't know. Um, it was good. I enjoyed it. Uh, I'm a little frazzled today. If you can't tell, I apologize. But yeah, that was, that was kind of texture. And I did fall behind a little bit that week. So going into week eight, which was the middle, the midpoint, I was slightly behind where I was supposed to be. Um, cause you're supposed to be at 40 K at the end of the week, which is supposed to be your midpoint, which for me is not the midpoint, but based off the scenes I had around there, I actually decided to skip ahead a little bit. Um, so I kind of picked up, I put down some scenes. I still have like some like notes for like what's going to happen in the scenes and everything, but I skipped ahead and actually worked on the midpoint this week, which is, uh, like the first attempt of the heist in my story, which was fun. Um, it's... It's gonna need a lot of work, it honestly, but it was good. Um, and I really enjoyed the course this week. Like, I actually really, really enjoyed it. Um, it was, again, on that midpoint, and they started by talking a lot about, like, inspirational thoughts and, like, how difficult it can be to write and putting the effort in and, like, you made it halfway and, you know, that whole uh, rigmarole, which was a good checkpoint. And then they went into, like, what you should be thinking about at the midpoint, which was interesting for me because, again, like, I'm a big plotter, so... The idea of thinking about it when you're at the midpoint is strange to me, but they talked about like, you know, the benefits of the midpoint, how it can kind of hold up, you know, your story, keep it from sagging in the middle, um, how it can create this like no going back moment of change. They did say that like not all stories have a midpoint, which again, for a big plotter was weird to me. Like I really like structure and the idea of having a, un like I know you can have unstructured stories. Like I've enjoyed a good number of them. My child is being loud. I think he's pretending to be a dog, so ignore that. But, yeah. So they talked about, like, how your character should change the middle, um, going from want to need, how that motivation kind of transitions. Uh, and then they talked about looking ahead and thinking about the ending and making sure, like, you're sequencing your events, looking back at what you've written so far and thinking about, you know, what was good, what needs more work, and then just, like making sure you're setting up the ending you want and like setting things up, which I thought is good. It's good things to think about. And also, even if you are a plotter, I think it's important to take the time to step back and think about, okay, like, is the stuff I've written actually setting up what I want it to set up? Oh my God, hold on. Okay, he's like down there howling like an animal. It's fine. Um, but yeah, so I thought that was good. Um, and I think it's definitely important to do that at multiple times in the story. Anytime I think there's a big shift, like you should be really being intentional about like, this is changing in my character's outlook. Have I set it up correctly? Like, what are they going to do now? How do I make sure that I'm like being true to that? Uh, so I, I enjoyed that. Um, and it's exciting being at the middle. My book is going to be <laughs> more than the word count, which I think is like 75k. It's going to be more than that. But I knew that. It's fine. It's fine. I tend to overwrite in the first draft because I'm kind of trying to like understand everything. So I write everything out more literally, whereas then in later drafts, I go back and make it a little bit more implied. So like I may write exactly what they're thinking really on the nose so that I am figuring it out. But then when I go back, I just delete that part because it's, you can still pick up on it. You know what I mean? So, you know, that's, I thought maybe I was going to be underwriting not underwriting, which is fine. I've been having a lot of fun with it though. Like drafting, it's been, it's been fun. It's been a real, a real good, a good time. Um, but going forward, let's see next we get next week is writing skills, which will be interesting, but I've decided because it's going to be an interesting next month for me. I have a friend from out of town visiting with us. Who's she's actually here now. And so my top priority is going to be spending time with her and I'm still going to keep up with like my writing and like watching the lessons, but I'm not going to be able to be quite as regimented about it. Okay. But anyway, um, she's here. So my schedule is just going to be a little bit weird. And so I've decided that I think that instead of vlogging the second half again, I'm not going to. So instead, what I think we're going to do is at the end of the course, I'm going to still do like my recap of the last half and like talk about my reviews for the course, which I've been keeping a lot of notes on and who I think this would benefit and be worth 
worth it for. But then I'm going to, I just want to talk a little bit about my journey as a writer. Like the whole point of this course is like being able to write a novel, right? And a lot of that is not even just the skills of doing it, but the structure and the motivation to doing it. And I just want to talk about how I got to the point, because it was a long struggling journey getting to the point where I was actually finishing books and seriously pursuing like publishing and stuff like that. And I think it'd just be cool to reflect on that a little bit and talk about what that took for me. Um, so that's what we're going to do for the last video. Um, there's a link in the description below if you want to sign up for the course. Uh, and like in general, like if, if you already know that you want to take the course even until I'm done, like you don't have to wait until my video's over. So the next class starts on September 2nd, which is in like six, seven, eight days, something like that. It's like in a week. Um, but if you, if you watch this and you're like, hell yeah, I'm definitely signing up right now. Or even if you watch this later and you want to sign up for the one after that, um, because the class after that is October 28th. I have a link in the description below. It's an affiliate link. I get a little bit of a cut when you do that. There's no discount for you though, but it would support the channel. So if you're gonna do it, might as well use my link. Uh, but yeah, I will see you in the next one.